Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from Weather Risk here in Central Virginia. Your captain of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your commander of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather. And then this special edition, we're going to be talking about this upcoming weekend, then also Memorial Day weekend. A lot of uncertainty about that. And I know a lot of people have been complaining in portions of the eastern U.S., not everybody, but some places about how we always manage to get rain on the weekends. Uh, that's it has we have been in that kind of cycle, but um, it's not everybody's seen that. New England's a lot drier in Great Lakes than the Mid Atlantic and the Ohio Valley, but we'll get into that in just a second. So, first, I did want to remind you, uh, of course, this here is the website. If you haven't seen it before, there you go. Uh, this here is the uh, Weather Risk uh, Grains Twitter page right there, and uh, which mostly focuses on the grain weather. Uh, for the U.S. and overseas, South America, uh, Ukraine, Russia, Europe, Australia, China, India, that sort of thing, and the, Indonesia. And, of course, this here is the uh, uh, Facebook page. All right, so we'll start out here. We're taking a look at the recent uh, El Nino condition. You can see that everything continues to weaken at a pretty good pace. Uh, very little left of the El Nino. I think it's essentially, I think it's dead. And you can see here the trend. This is region 1.2. And, uh, again, let me call up a marker here so you can see it. This is 1.2 here off the coast of South America. That's 3.4 in here. So if you go here, this is region 1.2. You can see the steady decline. That's now with the negative values as of uh, last Friday. And then this here is the uh, trend from 3.4. And again, you can see from early February, 1.6 straight down. We've got these spikes. But again, you can see the trend is way down down here and almost at zero now. Uh, the subsurface readings, this is very interesting. You can see that the last of the cold water is still there. Uh, the upper right corner, let me call up my marker so you can see what I'm talking about. Right in here, you see the warm, look, that's right off the coast of South America, off the coast of Peru. And there is all the cold water. This is pushing up towards it. Eventually, this little bubble will be gone and we'll be into La Nina. But so far, that little bubble's hanging on a little bit. Let me show you what I mean. This here is the uh, sea surface temperature as of May 9th. And area B is the uh, Enso region. You can see the cold water now is bubbling up and overpowering the last vestiges of the warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. So that's the, area B is a classic looking El Nino transitioning to neutral, transitioning to La Nina. Now area A, this is interesting. This is this huge pool of very warm sea surface temperatures, been around for months, maybe, maybe more than a year. Um, and it extends from Japan into the uh, central portions of the North Pacific. And then you have cold water on the uh, west coast of North America. Now that uh, strongly implies a negative PDO. And that means you get a lot of troughs on the west coast and more ridging in the plains the Midwest and the east coast. So if the pattern shifts, we could end up with a hotter and drier summer. But especially for the plains of the Midwest, I'm not sure about the east coast. So we'll see if that actually develops. And area C is the warm waters in the uh, eastern and subtropical Atlantic uh, that continues to be quite warm. All right, this is the latest trend. You can see here a couple of different things. Again, uh, I wanted to point out the uh, um, this pool right here of extremely warm water in the central Pacific right here. Uh, that's a relatively new development. And then you can see the trend. This is the last 15 days. There'll be Cold water really taken off here, and the Indian Ocean dipole has gone to neutral. So notice on the Atlantic, we've seen a lot of mixed signals here. Some areas have cooled off quite a bit. Uh, but right here, the La Nina is definitely um, uh, showing it's trending towards La Nina, no doubt about that. Now, this is the official sea surface temperatures from CFS, and so region 3.4. And again, that's this region up here. Uh, that's the critical region right here in the, in the ENSO along the equator, Equatorial Pacific. So, the uh, and you can see... Uh, the green dot is where we get to July. We're around a half a degree, maybe a six tenths of a degree below normal. Now, earlier, this image here, if you go back to February and March, this looked like we were going to be already at uh, minus one degrees um, centigrade uh, in July, and then rapidly moved to moderate or strong at La Nina during the heart of the hurricane season. That clearly is no longer the case. The CFS appears to be backing off of this. Now, we do reach... As you can see, oops, no, let me call that up here. Wrong thing. We do see here um, that we did to around minus 0 0.5 in July, and then we go to moderate by the time it gets to September, October. Um, 
So it's, it's taking a little slower to get here. Now, not all the models agree with this. And I want to point this out to folks. I think uh, there's a general consensus that, okay, the CFS is showing uh, La Nina. That's it. We're fine. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, these models, now this is a split here. And these are the North American models on the left-hand side, right? And um, you can see that most of these models, this is CFS, the orange line, the purple line. That's, uh, that's uh, NCAR, one of the NASA models. You can see they all have only the green line, which is the GFDL, does not go into La Nina by July and August as they go into the hurricane season. Now, the European models are here. The European, the French model, the British, the German model, the Canadian. Only the British model has it going to La Nina. All the other models do not, including the European. The European is colder than it was in April, but it's still not La Nina. And certainly not La Nina until, if it happens, very weak borderline La Nina, and not until September, October. So it's, it, this is, uh, um, you know, not great. It just isn't great. So um, now, locally, uh, this story came out. I posted this on the Facebook page. This is from the Capital Weather Gang, you can see. And you can see that we're getting a lot of weekend rains here um, over the, uh, you know, and they, they said you put it all together, it looks like the average weekend is twice as much rain as we get during the week. And, and you know, part of that is uh, how we count the weeks. Uh, you know, was the weekend Friday, Saturday? Is it Saturday, Sunday? Is it Sunday, Monday? Well, you know, that's three, three out of the seven days here. If we look at the um, uh, rainfall anomalies, in the last 14 days, it has turned really wet. Southeastern states, the Tennessee Valley, you can see there in Tennessee, Kentucky, Mid-Atlantic, up into Pennsylvania, Ohio. Uh, but notice that, you know, New York State in central and northern New England has not been that wet. It really hasn't been. Um, and if we look at the last 30 days, uh, yeah, you can see uh, western, much of Virginia is a little drier than normal, west Virginia as well. And then Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, New York State, New England, they've been quite dry over the last 30 days. But in the last 14 days, like I mentioned, it has turned wetter. Now, this was the upper air map from or back on Tuesday. A couple of things to point out here. Uh, this is trough here. The Mississippi Valley has brought the rain to the Midwest. Then this piece of energy here and this piece of energy here, these two features are going to merge and be a problem for this weekend for the central and eastern U.S. And then we have this big upper low developing here in northwest Canada. That's going to be a problem, but we'll get to each one of these things. So here is the upper air map now valid for Saturday, all right? from the uh, GFS model. Now, we, this huge upper low here that was up in Alaska drops down into British Columbia and the Canadian Prairie. See this? Now, this is going to bring a lot of cold air with it, but as it drops southward, you're going to have pieces of energy getting ejected eastward. And then you have this upper low right here, this trough of surface low pressure. So these features are going to meet on the east coast and produce some rain this weekend, uh, mostly out of the southern system. Um, and then you also have this huge blocking pattern, again, which is really unusual to see a block this large and this big in mid-May. Normally don't see this. These things usually begin to weaken by now. So uh, this big block is keeping this upper low, uh, pushing it further to the south. And that can be a problem for Memorial Day. We'll get to that in a little bit uh, because of the blocking pattern. But this is the rain feature for the weekend. So this is the GFS model midday here on this uh, Thursday. Um, you can see uh, the cold front approaching on Friday, right? Very nicely, uh, the Appalachians and Tennessee Valley rain there. Then uh, the front comes in. This is a Saturday. Some rain in the Mid-Atlantic, mostly south of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. It does not look that bad in Pennsylvania, New York, and New England this weekend. This is mostly Tennessee Valley, Mid-Atlantic. We're talking Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Georgia, the Carolinas, Kentucky, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, West Virginia, that sort of thing. And then um, this is now for the GFS for uh, Sunday. And you can see it's got some rain there Sunday during the midday hours. Eventually, the system pushes to the south by Monday. High pressure builds in and skies clear out. Now, if we break it down in a little more detail, this is the 18Z GFS. Let me get rid of this. This is wrong. Forgot to change that. Sorry. And you can see there's the front on a Friday afternoon, Friday evening. All right. It's approximately around the Appalachians, Alabama, Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, some of the range in the Shenandoah Valley up into Pennsylvania, New York. OK, but notice on the East Coast, at Friday afternoon, evening, you have plans. It looks pretty good here. Not too bad. Now, this is valid for um, uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. And let me blow this up here a little bit if we can see it. Yeah, uh, this is the system dropping to the south. All right. So it's a little kind of far, a little far to the south here. Uh, but you can see that Saturday night, again, significant rain in Virginia, portions of North Carolina, southern Maryland, Delaware. But notice 
Pennsylvania, New York, they miss it. This is just confined to this area. So if you're hearing about rain up in these areas, that's not correct. That's, that's a bad forecast. All right. <clears throat> and again, with that rain dropping to the south here, this is now uh, Sunday afternoon. You can see, again, nice rain here in Virginia, Maryland, Delaware. But as we blow this up, not seeing any in, North, in, in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New England, New York. It looks fine. Ohio Valley looks okay. The Gulf Coast looks good. Just right in this area. And the GFS, because of that, has significant rain. Look at these rains building. Oops, one. Okay, widespread one to three inch rains in the heart of Virginia and Southern Maryland, uh, into DC, uh, one inch and maybe inch and a half Baltimore's the Delmarva. But look, North Carolina, not that bad. Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, New England, not, not much rain at all this weekend. So that's the GFS solution. Now, because the GFS has that, look at the temperatures. Here in the upper left, this is Saturday max temperatures. A lot of 50s in here and low 60s under the cloud cover in the rain. Look at the Carolinas where they don't get the rain initially on Saturday. They're 75 to 80. And then this is Sunday. Look at this in Virginia underneath the cloud cover in the rain in the 50s all day. Delmarva, same thing. D.C., Baltimore, Richmond, Charlottesville, Lynchburg, Roanoke, ugh. Culpeper, Warrington, the whole place. Ugh, gosh. And even in Hampton Roads, it's, it's still in the 60s. Now, the European is different. I mean, again, this shouldn't be here. Sorry about that. This is the European model, okay? There's the front Friday afternoon, Friday night, okay? Right through the Appalachians. Very nice. Rain approaching the East Coast. And then this is a Saturday. And you can see it's got pockets of rain in here. Uh, but uh, not great. There's a lot of gaps in this. Let me blow this up a little bit. You can see it. You see a lot of gaps in the rain shield here. This light stuff is very, this light green is very light rain. So you've got pockets of moderate rain, but not much. And then uh, the European for a Sunday drops that rain to the south. Now, the GFS, as you recall, had that rain hanging by on Sunday. So there's a little bit of difference here. Now, the European is right, but it's a lot drier Sunday. And that reflects in the rainfall map. So as we can, here's the European. Uh, bring it over. So you can see right here that um, look how much less rains in Virginia. I mean, there's some rain in the western half of Shenandoah Valley by the Piedmont, some good rains in North Carolina, moderate rains in eastern West Virginia, but nothing like the GFSs. And eastern Virginia, the Del over to the Delmarva, not bad at all. Hampton Roads, not too bad. Some rain, but not great. So this is a big difference from, um, from let's, this map here. Look at the difference. That's the GFS. That's the European. That's huge. That's a big difference. So I'm not exactly sure how to play this. i got to tell you, I'm, I'm a little uncertain about this. Um, I know. Uh, so we'll see. Um, uh, probably the compromise solution is the best. I think maybe the GFS is probably overdoing the rain a little bit. Uh, but we are in a rainy pattern. So the GFS could be right here. So hopefully tomorrow morning I'll have a much better idea. We'll see. Now beyond that, what happens is, okay, the low leaves the coast. You get this ridge forming right here. And it's pretty nice weather. But we have this first, this upper low we talked about uh, coming southward. This upper low here is this feature uh, right here, okay? This is coming southward into the Great Lakes like this underneath the block, underneath the block, this way. And that results in this kind of weather pattern. So uh, you got an upper low, uh, on the, you know, a giant upper low, surface low pressure north of Minnesota, the cold front moving to the Midwest. There it is right there. Ridge protecting the East Coast for a couple of days on Tuesday, Wednesday. So that's very nice. That's fine. And eventually this cold front will arrive by the middle of the week. All right. Now, what about Memorial Day weekend? Well, um, a couple different possible solutions here. As we uh, look at the uh, pattern, okay, we see um, this is Memorial Day weekend. So um, let's uh, start with this. So um, this is the European model. Now, we talked about, again, uh, this upper low um, coming southeastward here. And when it, it eventually moves just to around the Great Lakes region. And that presents a problem. Uh, and let me show you what I mean. This is the um, European model. So the upper low splits. A piece goes to the Pacific Northwest. The other piece splits into the Great Lakes. Now, this is Thursday. And this is a pretty uh, ominous looking map. When you have a big upper low in the Great Lakes like this, it usually means strong cold fronts and rain in the, in the Ohio Valley, the Mid Atlantic, New England. And that's what happens. This upper low goes over towards. Um, New England, and then this feature comes in behind it, and you'll see here in just a second. 
So this is the upper low, the first one. Here comes the second one in the Dakotas. And then that drops in behind it for uh, Sunday night into Monday, Memorial Day. And if you have this upper low here in the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, it's going to be crappy in uh, Memorial Day in New England, the Mid-Atlantic, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes. This is not a good sign to see here. Southern states look great, but you know this upper low goes through on Friday into Saturday. Not great for the Great Lakes, New England, or the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, and then you have the second one coming in behind it. So it's a much stormier pattern. Now, the GFS is very different. The GFS keeps this system back in the west, and you have a bit of a ridge here across the eastern U.S. This is a Friday, uh, May 24th. And then, uh, as a result, the trough stays over the Midwest. As you can see, notice there's a ridge here on the east coast. Let me call up the market here. Got a ridge here on the east coast. So this is now Sunday. So all the rain is in the Ohio Valley, west of the Appalachians, in the Great Lakes, and the upper Midwest. Right? So there's a stalled front right in here. Now, eventually, that front gets to the East Coast, and then you get your rain on Memorial Day. Now, the GFS is doing it this way. You have rain Monday on the front. Like I said, the front's going to stall right here, right, west-east direction across the Ohio Valley. And then the GFS has the rain on Monday from Missouri all the way to Kentucky and Ohio, mostly southern portions of Illinois, Indiana. And then it moves in the mid-Atlantic for Monday afternoon, Memorial Day afternoon to evening, and it looks like rain coming in then. So very different solutions here. Again, I don't know which solution is correct. The ensembles don't tell us much. The GFS ensembles support the GFS. The European model ensembles support the European model. So uh, it, I can't figure, I do not know which solution to look at. I wish I could tell you for certain, I just don't know. Hopefully by this weekend, I'll have a much better idea about what to do for Memorial Day weekend, because obviously it's a big holiday. Um, so. We'll, we'll have to hope for the best and see how it plays out. Uh, in this upper air pattern, it looks unlikely that we're going to get through Friday, uh, May 24th, Saturday, May 25, and then Sunday, Monday with no rain um, in the Mid-Atlantic or New England, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, or the Tennessee Valley. In that four-day period in this kind of weather pattern, we're going to see at least one interval of rain. Hopefully not more than that, but we'll see how it plays out. This is meteorologist at DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Twitter page and then over on the Facebook page and on the website.